It's weapon day. We're gonna be maxing Crane's Echoing Call, checking out its passive, perhaps testing a few things, and talking about if it can be good for anyone else. First, of course, we gotta raise it. We did most of the preparing in the preparing four, so we don't have too much to do here. We also have farmed one day's worth of enemies by now. When the actual update dropped, we probably need more though. There's the first star anyway. Let's go ahead and just continue on here, feeding these three star books in. Apparently there are also some new three star weapons in the new area's chests. I believe. I haven't farmed the new area or its chest yet, so I don't have to worry about that, but just as a little PSA, apparently you won't be able to get these weapons again if you like destroy them and put them into something else. So take care of that and possibly lock these three star weapons. But yeah, let's just continue on here as far as we can go. Again, we should have all of the resin and common enemy mats at least. The elite enemy is what I'm not sure about, but we're already at level 60 here. Uh, we can transform all the lowest grade now. Let's just head to the crafting station real quick. Hope to get a nice little sucrose bonus. Zero bonus on 22. That's unfortunate sucrose. Here we go with the fourth star anyway. We definitely have some enemy farming to do. That's for sure. Get plus 10 level there for level 70 we probably yep we can't even do the next one maybe with crafting we'll see no i don't think so we can only get six maybe if sucrose makes up for the fact she gave us no bonus on 22 still no bonus yep not even the fifth star and i think for the last star we need like 27 purples so yeah we definitely gotta head to the new area here we do have a decent amount of these wolf boys i did mark some of them with these little enemy pins there's apparently some area here that's still covered for me but not on the interactive map which is strange we'll probably try and go over there because there are some enemies just gonna try running there and see what happens maybe in a later patch for now we're actually going to start farming in my friend rocky's world ah here we go here's our first bundle Ooh, i do see two purples there yes one Oh no, second one was just an artifact. Next bundle of three here. I do appreciate how there's a lot of elites this time, unlike a lot of the other elites. We also did get a purple here, which is good. Only one purple for three, but I mean, we got a lot of smaller mats also. Nothing? This one dropped nothing? Maybe it was because it was just a Sealy here. All right, we got a nice little bundle of three again. Any, no purples this time. It's fine though. Got a couple more here. No purples. We do have a purple here. Nice. Got another purple from this one. There were actually two here. Okay, there we go. Another purple. Also, since we're preparing for my real cloud retainer to be level 90, uh, we're gonna grab some green stones from Rocky as well. Oh, that's unfortunate. I can't get these. There's like three in some of them, but I can't do that here. Sad. We can get these though. Here's three. Actually four. Yeah, I think a lot of the markers I have on my map are these pots, though. Yinfei will show me which ones I can actually pick up. It would feel a little weird to do beeps on a weapon raising video. So I'll do a Zhongli shield uh, montage. All right, I have plundered Rocky's world of all of her valuable resources. Now I'm going to leave. <laughs> Let's see how close we are with enemy mats with just the ones we farmed from Rocky's world. If it's not enough, we still have my world, which should be plenty. Let's see here. Yeah, we can get it to the uh, fifth star pretty easily there. Let's auto add some chunks here to get it to 80. Look at that base attack already at level 80. That's crazy. Oh yeah, we're actually pretty close. We only need eight more purples. Should be pretty easy. I'm actually just gonna use the adventure handbook since we don't need that many more. <laughs> it's showing me the one I was about to go to anyway. Three enemies, no purples, unfortunately. Yes, purple here, no purples. We actually got two purples here. One of them I picked up in the heat of battle. Let's do one more enemy and then we'll check. No purple, but this one did drop a purple. Okay, we should easily have enough now. Sucrose, keep your bonus. I don't care about them anymore. Nine? Okay. I mean, we got a couple raw purples and I think we only needed eight or anything anyway. Yes, there we go. We can go ahead and max it. 679 base attack going up to 741. Is that the highest actually? 741 is the highest in the game, just on par with some of the other crazy ones like Song of Broken Pines and one of the swords, Aquila. I, I kept trying to remember that. It's like the one standard sword I don't have yet still. But anyway, now that it's max, let's look at the passive here. After the equipping character hits an opponent with a plunging attack, all nearby party members' plunging attacks will deal 28% increased damage for 20 seconds. When nearby party members hit opponents with plunging attacks, they'll restore 2.5 energy to the equipping character. So her, and that can happen every 0.7 seconds. I don't know if you can plunge faster than every 0.7 seconds anyway, so 
basically an extra 2.5 energy per plunge. I would consider that pretty significant actually, and Cloud Retainer is one of those units that you kind of need a lot of energy on. Having her in her signature weapon really reduces that requirement. I think advice before her signature is to maybe sometimes go energy sands instead of attack percent, but I think with just a couple of energy regeneration substats, you don't need an energy sands anymore. I think there is more considerations, but this is probably a topic for a different video. We're just looking at the weapon here. I just want to mention really quickly that if you have Farzan, for example, and you're a Sien Yun team, you again even need less energy. So obviously the passive seamlessly integrates into her kit because it's her signature weapon. The requirement is hitting an opponent with a plunge attack, which she can easily do with E. And this will increase plunge damage for the whole team, which she allows the team to do. And giving 2.5 energy back per plunge is really nice. She only needs 70 for her burst. If the characters are doing all eight plunge plunges they can after Sien Yun's burst, that would give her 20 energy back. Mine is C1, I could get her to C2, but I kind of want to compare a little bit for God Mode. So the fact she can do E twice means we literally don't need to care about energy at all. But honestly, just with her signature, her energy requirements go so low. So there's the passive. I do want to take a look at our other Catalyst users here. We'd first have to rule out anyone that doesn't want attack as their primary stat because of how much attack this weapon actually gives. Huge base and then the sub that of course as well, which means all healers here except for herself, all HP scaling DPSs, which I'm pretty sure is just Nuvalat, all other supports or other characters that rather have different stats like Elemental Mastery or Energy Regeneration, and then of course taking out Sian Yun because it's her signature. Of the characters that are left, there's only one that can naturally do a plunge on his own and that's Wanderer. Everyone else can do a plunge with help from a Zhongli Pillar or a Vinti Air Current. At the end of the day though, what is it matter. Wonder can do a plunge at the end of his skill, but all that really does is grant the rest of the party plunge damage, and if the other party members do plunges, he'll get some energy back, but <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do like Wonder and Shao, but generally two main DPSs don't really jive in a single team. Not sure you'd also have like Wonder and Kazuha, and then even in the best case scenario, Kazuha's only gonna do two plunge attacks. I mean, you could have C and Yun in your team to make everyone plunge easily, but in that case, I would assume you would just give her her own signature weapon, you know? Weapons are steadily becoming more and more niche. Like at least with some of the past ones, I, I could see some kind of use case, Maybe if you were trying to get Nahida's signature and you got this one, for example, who could you give it to? That's kind of my thought process here. And the assumption, of course, is that you don't have Sien Yun. For all intents and purposes, the passive is useless for everyone besides her. You might be able to get some tiny benefit out of it if for some reason you do use Wander and Kazuha together, which Bones actually does sometimes. Then Kazuha's one or two plunges will be a tiny bit stronger and Wander will get a few energy pack. If Faruzan was a Catalyst user, I could definitely see this being used in Shao teams if you didn't have Sien Yun, but she is unfortunately a bow user. And even then you would need to use a spot for like Zhongli and then waste time climbing up his pillar and doing a plunge. It just doesn't make sense. More often recently, I'm just wondering why I even make these videos. It's just kind of part of the series now. And I like doing them. I like focusing on the weapon, but it's just like, okay, it's literally only for Sien Yun. And I could just end it there. If we just take the passive out of the equation, like we kind of had to do with Verdict, even though Verdict at least gave 20% attack regardless, it is still somewhat interesting because of its massive base attack. Then there's like Skyward Atlas, which also has a big amount of base attack. More people have Skyward Atlas than Crane's Echoing Call. Or Lost Prayer, which actually has a good secondary stat of crit rate. And while neither of their passives are insane or anything, it's better than nothing, which is what you get with this. As a quick aside, since we never did the drip segment for summons, which I usually do, I will take a moment to talk about its design. I actually don't like it very much. I mean, I get what they're going for with the little sliding thing in here. I just don't find it all that pleasing to look at. I don't like the flatness of it, I guess. But yeah, I mean, it, it does suit Sien Yun fine. It has like more or less her color scheme going on there. But all right, for our tiny little weapon showcase here, we're just gonna give it to Wander. I just kinda wanna see the passive in action, see what's kinda going on with it, see if there are any special effects we can look out for. So there it is, just kind of chilling there, spinning. We do actually have to hit an enemy with a plunging attack, so let's go find one. There's also nothing that will reflect in the stat page, so I'm gonna hit a real enemy just to be sure here. Okay, uh, well we do have like an up arrow now. Kazuha's plunge here should be increased. I mean, my Kazuha at least doesn't do a lot of damage anyway, so doesn't really matter. I guess what could be interesting is to see the energy regeneration we get. We have an Animo Slime here, which is actually perfect. We literally can't kill it, which is nice. 
All right, so Wonder has very little energy now. We're going to do a plunge attack, uh, which should give us the boost. Now we're just going to do, um, yeah, Shao's stuff here. We can't really see Wonder's energy going up right now because he's off field, of course. Uh, so we'll just have to wait. I guess we've done about eight. Now we can go back to Wander, and I mean, without getting that many orbs from other characters, I mean, we did Shao's ease. He's already like more than half full. I still don't think it's worth it over some other weapon for Wander, because again, I wouldn't use Shao and Wander in the same team, but that's how it works. If this is like one of the first five star weapons you've ever gotten though, it's gonna be fine for basically every attack scaling main DPS catalyst user like Wander, Risley, Klee, Yinfei, whatever. Probably still not as good as even Skyward Atlas or Lost Prayer, but it does have a lot of base attack. Maybe there is something really dumb I overlooked though. If so, make sure to drop that in the comments down below. Leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed though is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.